Okay, so Adobe has done their November update for Lightroom Web. Uh, the big thing was the improvement to what they call shares. Um, sort of a gallery system. It's through the old share mechanism, so I guess that's why they named it that way. Um, here's a quick example of what I can do. So I picked five photos, shared them, added a little story, images, broke it up, before and after, you know. But how do we get here? Um, here's the behind the scenes. It's quite simple. When you have your images selected, you can just click between them to create a new segment, add some text. Uh, if you only add a title, when you view it in the shared link, it will be centered. Otherwise, it will left align, as you can see here. Uh, fairly simple. In case you don't know how to get to this point, let's hop into Lightroom. Uh, I have somewhere right here a little collection I use that is for when I quickly need to shoot something in RAW on my phone. Yes, at the top of a button, you can easily create a new sh uh, collection, but I just like having this. Got the little pound sign. Know, hashtag shoot raw and I can just click it start shooting raw and sort the files out later if I choose obviously I don't sort them but I could so I've already got this shared online uh, if you didn't have anything shared uh, you should probably check out uh, what is Lightroom mobile if you have some photos selected you can create a new collection and include selected photos if you don't have any you can make a blank collection and you probably don't have any collection sets, otherwise you can group them in subfolders. Make sure you click Sync with Lightroom Mobile and Create. And if you didn't have any photos selected, pick some, drag them in. You'll see it saying Uploading Photos. Then you can hop over into your web browser and view the collection online. So now we pick the photos we want. So this one this one, and this one. These are all local stuff. Then we get into a bit of travel, BTS, whatever. Alaska. Why not? Nice sunset. It's actually a panorama merge. Campsite. My watch. Watchtower. Well, that should cover it. So once you've got your photos, you go to share. Uh, you want a Lightroom web gallery. You can also send them to Adobe Portfolio and they will just be one after the other in a new project. So rather than pulling them in from portfolio you can push them to portfolio just depends where you're working from I guess so I'm gonna create a web gallery call it test phone raw pick our cover photo looks lovely uh, if you click allow downloads it'll let the people click for a JPEG uh, they're usually a couple hundred kilobytes I don't know the exact sizing your exif data and location data if available. Let's go ahead and go nuts. It's going to group them all together. I don't like that. These are all separate. These are from Letchworth State Park. Alaska. I like this on its own. Tobermory. And some local stuff. Add some text. Blah blah. I don't want it centered. Ah, maybe I do. Then down here we'll move over.
go. Click the link, and it will already be updated. Actually, this is a bad sample image because this area here is just a blurred, zoomed version of the image. So something with a little more interest might be a better background. Maybe this guy. But there we go. So if I click here, and you'll see this is the typical, oh this one's actually quite large, you'll see this is the typical um, Lightroom web interface. You can give it a like, you can leave a comment, or you can expand here for some more detail. And there's all our exit data, what it was shot with, and here are our uh, GPS coordinates. If you click those, there you go. Back over here. Let's. Uh, where are our settings? Right here. So let's turn off metadata, location, and actually while we're here, I will demonstrate a better, hopefully better. Let's go with this. There we go. Just gives you a little more to look at. But. And now when I'm opening images, you can still expand, but all it tells you is the file name. I left downloads on because who cares. Uh, these are probably 15 to 20 meg uh, DNG files, dings if you will. Uh, giving us a fair size. Uh, if you do have the raw files available, which this obviously does, as you can see it doesn't give them the full file option. That's just when you're logged in to your own internal stuff, which is another new feature they added. Yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and now you've got a gallery you can uh, share with people. There we go. Okay. I have traditionally used Spark for storytelling like that. Show the uh, rendered version, I guess. There we go. A little, a little cleaner, a little more professional, maybe, but a lot, a lot more work to set up. So if you don't want to go through all that effort, uh, maybe it's not maybe it's not that important. Although again, uh, Spark's pretty easy too. <laughs> anyway, if you don't want to go through all that effort, here we go. And you write a little better. You, you can make this look pretty good. Especially, I mean, this is all behind the scenes and random junk. If, if you uh, are serious about what you're doing, you can have a decent presentation here. <laughs> 